So let's move on to our teaching moment where we will be coaching the coaches. And you have a very interesting thing to talk about today, which is the defining moment in a baseball pitcher's motion. Yes. So let me tell you the way this came up. And by the way, Joe, is it in the show notes that our listeners can go to to see this photo? And also we know that they can go to Angel Brelly Pitching on YouTube. Are those the two ways they can see this photo that we're going to be talking about? Yes, exactly. This this is uh, one of our episodes where we do have a visual. So for those of you who are who have your phone handy or are listening on a computer or however you're listening, please We'll give you a second to go to the show notes and pull up the picture or go to Angel Borelli's YouTube channel to take a look at the picture that we will be talking about right now. Okay, so let me tell you about this guy. So this is Ben Clegg, who pitches for the Academy of Arts in San Francisco, and he sent me this picture. I haven't seen him now for over a year. He was plagued with injuries and problems, rotator cuff, everything, and he came to me. He, as you see, is a lefty. He had many reasons I could see why he was having the pain. And this guy was one of the kind of players you want to work with because he's so committed to everything. And it was not an easy road for him at all. And so I haven't seen him. And that, for me, no news is good news. And I get this photo. He texts it to me three days ago in the text that said, all our hard work. And what I love about this is, of course, it's why I do what I do, to have somebody feeling success. But the other thing that I really loved, and I'm going to point out some things, this view here and what he's doing here was so perfect for me to teach something so important. And all you coaches, you can go and get this exact view of your guys and stop the camera at this exact place. And I'm going to teach you how to see right here in this moment what's going to happen next. And it's a defining moment because if he doesn't look similar to this, and I'll give you the ways that things could be wrong, you're going to have problems with the delivery. But here's what I love the most about this. He knew when he saw this that it was right. He knew that it was something that I needed to see because it's something we talked about. And, and of course, when you're learning as a pitcher, it's conceptual, you're trying to do it. But the fact that he could take the, the information I gave him, put him in the driver's seat with him, send him on his way to college, have him know exactly what he needed to work on. And then here, I haven't seen him in over a year, he sends this to me saying, look, Angel, I finally did it. I finally have the correct shoulder mechanics right now at this phase. For me to know that the knowledge was in his brain and in his body to where he could recognize this is, to me, the most successful story that I could have. Because if you're an instructor, you just tell people to do things. Put your arm here, put your foot there. The purpose of this show for all you coaches and for your pitchers is I want you to understand concepts so you're always in the driver's seat so you have a chance to work and improve as you go on. This guy four years ago had so much pain that he is even can be this happy to send me a photo is so exciting. He never gave up. And if you have something to work towards, so efficient mechanics make sense. So that's what's so great about getting this picture. And I thank you, Ben, so much for sending it to me. So guys, here's what I want you to look at in this photo. So first of all, he is just finishing up the rotation segment of the phase of the motion. So as you know, once his front foot lands, he starts to turn. And the pitcher turns at three levels. He turns his hips or his pelvis. And his pelvis, if you look at Ben and if you picture him with jeans on, both pockets in the front are laying across the front of his pelvis. His belt is at the top of his pelvis. Right above the belt is his uh, lower trunk muscles. And right underneath the uh, where you see the school name, those are his upper trunk muscles. He's just completing his rotation. So his pelvis went first, 
and that's the way it's supposed to happen. The lower trunk is supposed to rotate second, and you can see that's almost finished because his buttons, you can see, are almost square facing the catcher. And the third piece that comes is right where his school name is. And that level of rotation is bringing the arm, the pitching arm, into a squared up position. Now, two things are happening at this moment in this pitching motion. And one of the things, Ben, if you're listening, wow, I love that he has some glove arm left. A lot of pitchers at this point, their glove arm is already in, already dead. Sometimes it's in a weird place. But if you can see, picture what's going to happen next. He's going to continue rotating to be perfectly square with the catcher. Now, remember, he's not going to be stopping there, but he goes through that perfectly squared position. And to square up with velocity, he's going to pull that glove arm in even more. That's going to pull his right side around. See where the A is? That A is going to squeeze itself over to the left. And that rotation from the glove arm and those muscles under the school name are going to bring his arm into position. Because of the forces doing that, his elbow joint will take that forearm, which is almost at 90 degrees. And by the time he is squared up and ready to accelerate, his forearm will be at 90 degrees to his bicep. The ball will be directly in line. In other words, that forearm is going to be straight back towards that fence. He's going to probably have more external rotation. The ball's ready for delivery and he accelerates. So in terms of positioning, this is perfect. He has rotated. Now, here's what you want to look for. Number one. So, Joe, I want you to tell me as I say these things, if because you're the voice of all the guys out there listening. So, if you look at his left hip, and if he had jeans on, that pocket is right now facing the hitter. Okay. If you look at his arm, look from the shoulder of his pitching arm to the elbow, you'll notice the angle of that is behind his hip. In other words, his hip came forward before the arm. In baseball language, it's that your arm is lagging behind you. What's really happening is he's stretching all the muscles that are going to contract when he's ready to throw the ball. Now, in order to get that stretch, you have to have that stretch around the shoulder at this point, and it also has to be behind the hip. In other words, if when you turn, you turn in one piece, you're not going to have any stretching. If when you start to turn, you get your arm into this position right here and right here, if your hip isn't all the way around, in other words, it did not lead the whole show, what will happen is his elbow will start to lead. He will start pointing the elbow forward the way a quarterback throws a football. He has no choice because his hip isn't around, so he's got to keep moving. And then you have a pitcher leading with the elbow. So in order to use the shoulder to accelerate the ball, which guys, the shoulder is the big gun. It's the joint that rotates the fastest. You've got to use the shoulder and you've got to stretch it before you use it. If you have a pitcher who looks like this, and as he squares up the top, he maintains that stretch in his shoulder as his upper body squares up. Then he rotates it forward. Then you're going to have a pitcher who's got proper mechanics. If his hip right now would be facing the corner, oh God, he's a lefty, so I, I can't even tell you which plate that is. So I guess it'd be third base, right, Joe? Yes. You know, I'm never on yes. a field. So, yes. okay. So if his back leg wasn't turned all the way around and his back leg was on an angle, which is what happens, you get incomplete rotation, his lower body would not be positioning itself to accelerate. Well, he's not going to hold his arm back waiting for it. And in fact, if it's not already square, it means it didn't, the pelvis didn't rotate efficiently. In other words, the back leg wasn't used correctly. Then his elbow is going to be forced to come forward. 
So what you have to have at this moment for everything to turn out okay, and his job isn't done. He's still got some things he's got to make sure and do. But at this point, he is completely set up for a perfect accelerating shoulder, elbow, wrist, ball velocity positioning. If your pitcher doesn't look like this, he cannot catch up in the middle of the motion. He's either going to lose, not have all the velocity he could have because he didn't square up his pelvis, therefore didn't use his trunk. He didn't, he's not going to have all the velocity because he has to lead with the elbow. He's going to probably have location problems because he'll be throwing a dart or pushing the ball. So at this, this is the defining moment. If a pitcher looks like this right here, he can convert that into something special. If he doesn't look like this right here, he's going to be, I'm not saying he's not going to throw a strike or he's not throwing hard, but he's not throwing efficiently, meaning using everything the way it was designed to be used. So, so far, Joe, does that make sense? It does. It's funny. Before you started talking about it, I was looking at this and I was saying, you know, a lot of pitchers, a lot of other pictures of pitchers that I see, particularly at the major league level who are at this point in their motion, they don't look like this. They look like they're off balance. They're leaning one way or the other. And and the next thing I was thinking was, and I'll see the elbow starting to lead. Yes. And, and, then, and then I was starting to think that. And then you just started talking about the, Excellent. the elbow leading with the elbow. So I think I've been listening to listening. something over well, the last five years. <laughs> yes. And actually, this whole show has been a test for you. And I'm giving oh. you an A plus to you. I've now gone to sixth grade. So <laughs> wonderful. And my little pitching motion school. Now, I want to talk about two things because this is such a great photo to teach you coaches something. Number one, the reason, let's talk about the hip first because remember I said, hey, the hip's got to be square. And then we, the second thing is we want the arm behind it. We don't want you rotating in one piece. Okay. The way that left hip, the le- that the way the left part of the pelvis turned towards the plate Because remember, he was sideways, went down the hill, and then he turned. It's through muscles that are on the pelvis in the front, up at the top, and the use of his rear leg. Notice that his foot has turned completely over at this point because he used the ball of the foot to have pressure against the ground. Pressure using the ground to stabilize so he could turn the leg. And that process is coming from mostly his hamstrings and some hip muscles. The foot has to be down to do that. He's got to lengthen out and keep the foot in contact with the ground long enough so it can turn the pelvis. By using that lower body connection to turn the pelvis, it creates that beginning of that stretch. Now, if this was Araldis Chapman we're looking at and we weren't paying attention to his front leg, which is probably the only part of him I'm not crazy about, his arm, that shoulder to elbow, would be way back. In other words, you'd be seeing pulling like crazy. His hip would be one way and his shoulders the other way, way back. That's the difference in a guy who throws over 100. Now, Ben's doing a great job here. And see, what I love about this is now Ben can continue to improve because he's got efficient mechanics that can work for him. And now when you're doing it right, every time you do it, you get better at it because each muscle gets use, it gets loaded, it repairs, and it comes back to fight another fight for you. If you're doing it wrong, you do it differently every time. You don't get the conditioning, you don't get the training. So the first thing is the back leg helped him get his leg square. So I guarantee you, coaches, when you go out and look at some of your guys, you're going to see that hip. It never got square. And then you're going to see the next move is the arm's going to lead. The arm will be in front of the body. Now, the second thing is, here's where pitchers lose velocity. At this point, he's got to keep that arm in that exact same place. Meaning, if we had his shirt off and we went behind him, we would see that his left shoulder blade was in towards his spine. And anybody listening that can do this, just bring your blade in towards your spine. That's called scapular retraction. The pitchers that throw the hardest, they maintain scapular retraction for longer. 
There's muscles involved in this. I don't want to go into it, but you're really pre-stretching some other muscles. So when he turns now to square up, he pulls that glove arm in, and that's like turning the steering wheel just a little tiny bit more. We don't want his arm to start coming forward yet. And the best pitchers maintain that sort of stretched look across the front of the shoulder as they square up, and then boom. Then they let it go, and that's the acceleration. So right here, defining moment, you got to look like this. But your next movement, please take advantage of this beautiful motion you just got into because if you start letting the arm go and it loosens up too soon, you're not ready to throw because remember one of the things we talked about in the podcast, Joe, with the late arm? Right. The ball has got to be ready to go forward when you are. Right. If you're square, if he was completely squared up, so picture him completely squared. Now we've got a straight line with the shoulders, but that ball was near his ear, just like it is now, because he doesn't have time to get it out, like Ben does. He's got one movement left, and that arm's going to be totally perfect. I already know it. But if he doesn't move that, He's going to have to then lead with the elbow because he needs one more movement to get the ball in line to accelerate. So coaches, if you want to know how to use video and you want to know things to look at, defining moments, this is one thing to look at. Be prepared to see crazy stuff, but it will be at least a place for you to start putting your own knowledge with this and saying, oh, this is what's wrong with this guy. I knew something was wrong. Now, this is also why we want to have great lower body mechanics, because the ability for him to do this means that he stepped in the right place, he turned his body correctly, and you can't do that if you're all twisted up or you're doing something crazy. So anyway, I call this the defining moment of a pitcher's motion. If he gets here, he's set up for success. If he's not here, He's going to be compensating during delivery for whatever it was that he didn't do to have himself completely facing the target and do it through sequential rotation. So cool, huh? All from this picture Ben sent. Yeah, that's very cool. That's a excellent illustration and, and a great overview of everything. I mean, this is a, I often get the question from coaches and, and parents uh, can you just give me an example of, of somebody to watch or something that I can look at that is correct? And I, I can't, I can never find anything, not from a major league level. It's, mm-hmm. it's almost impossible because so many major league pitchers do things wrong and yeah. uh, still are able to throw 95 miles an hour, hundred miles an hour in spite of themselves. It's, it's because they're so athletic. Yeah. So it's hard, but now, now at least I have at least one picture that I can show them. So thank you. Yes. And I don't go, and this is the thing, and this is uh, my whole story with my career. I didn't go looking for baseball pitching. Pitching found me. I didn't go looking for this, but this came to me and I said, wow, a teaching moment. How beautiful is this? Because there's so many cool things going on. Hey, and by the way, coaches, you always heard, you know, I'm a glove arm fanatic. The ones who've been listening to me know this. Look at this guy's glove arm. He's still got something left. In fact, he's got as much left with his glove arm as he does with his pitching arm. This is a perfectly synchronized upper body rotation. His right arm is going to help his left side uh, move faster into this delivery, into the acceleration. And when you look at, in fact, I would get out there and maybe just have fun one day and say, let me see where pitchers glove arms are when they're just completing their rotation. Talk about having an interesting afternoon. <laughs> oh, you'll see glove arms that are done before the pitcher even has started to turn. Right. And you'll know his glove arm isn't doing anything. Remember, everything has to be moving. You can't just stop one part and start another. And nothing starts in the middle of the motion. Whatever you do at the beginning, you're stuck with. So this, this photo here is stellar to teach what I taught today. And I'm so excited. And I can't tell you how much I respect Ben for the tenacity that he has shown throughout the years. Because I cannot tell you the injuries that he had. There were many. And then he came to me and we just started rebuilding him. And you know that lefties always 
come with some extra funkiness on their own. <laughs> I don't right. know what it is. Reason, I don't know good. what it is. No. I don't know what it is. But anyway, so that's my uh, teaching moment for all you coaches and keep the questions coming. If you have any questions about this, you can email me. Yeah, that's great, Angel. 